Okay, the mics are on. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Form is present for the City Council, Successor Agency, and Housing Authority. All right, we're going to have uh, public comment. Members of the public that wish to address the City Council, this is the public access method by phone. You would dial 888-251-2949 or 215-861-0694 using this specific access code for March 15th, 809-06-07, pound, wait three seconds and press pound again. Again, the number is 888 888- 251-2949 or 215-861-0694. Operator, any callers? Yes, ma'am, we do have one caller. Go ahead, caller. Caller, please go ahead. Hi, my, my name is Nancy Hanna. I'm uh, calling from Better Neighbors LA in regards to item number two. Better Neighbors LA is a group of housing advocates, homeowners, tenants, and workers who are concerned about the impact of illegal short-term rentals on our community. And I'm calling in support of the proposal to extend the Inglewood moratorium on short-term rentals. Better Neighbors uh, applauds the city's research of best enforcement practices, and we encourage Inglewood to consider adopting the Santa Monica standard requiring all short-term rentals to be hosted. Hosted short-term rentals protect housing, Man. Ensure supervision. She's talking about the public hearing. Oh, um, ma'am, th that is the uh, public hearing. So right now, you can come back. Well, will you go ahead and finish? So this okay. will be your comment for the public hearing. Go ahead. Go ahead, ma'am. so much. I apologize if I called her in the wrong time. No, no problem. Um, okay. Hosted short-term rentals, protect housing, ensure supervision, reduce nuisance, and safety concerns and are more effectively and efficiently enforced. Inglewood should require all short-term rentals to be hosted to best protect housing and the safety of its residents. Thank you so much. Okay, ma'am, but we're, we're going to be better than Santa Monica. I spent 15 years there. We'll be better. Oh. Right. Promise you that. That's right. good to hear. Thank you so much. All right. all right. Thank you. Okay, we'll close public comment uh, if that's the last caller. Uh, now we're going to go to the library. Uh, could we have uh, people come up to the podium? Whoever would like to speak can come up to the podium. No speakers, Mayor. Okay, there are no speakers. With that, we'll close public comment. Item 1, CS1 and H1. Warrant register. Madam City Clerk. Council members, successor agency members, and housing authority members, Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Chairman Butts. Aye. Um, since I think uh, PH1 may take longer, does anybody object to us going to PH2? No objection. No. Okay. So, Madam Clerk, what's the next scheduled matter? Yes, Mayor, the next scheduled matter is a public hearing to consider extension of urgency interim ordinance number 22-05 for an additional 10 months and 15 days or upon the effective date of a short-term rental ordinance, whichever is first, continuing a moratorium on any and all building permits, business licenses, conditional use permits, or any entitlements for establishing or expanding any short-term rental anywhere in the city of Inglewood. Okay, so notice of this hearing been given in a time, form, and manner as required by law. And do you have the affidavit on file? Mayor, notice has been given and affidavit is on file. Have any communications been received on the matter? No communications have been received, Mayor. Mr. City Manager, is there a staff report on the matter? Yes, Ms. Alicia Fong, Project Coordinator for the Housing Protection Department. She manages the short-term rentals program. Ms. Fong, Welcome. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Alicia Fong. I'm the Program Coordinator for the Housing Protection Department. I'm the Manager of the Short-Term Rental Division. This public hearing was set to request an extension of the interim ordinance number 22-05 for the time period of 10 months 
and 15 days or upon the effective date of a short-term rental ordinance. The extension will continue the current moratorium that prohibits any and all building permits, business licenses, conditional use permits, or any entitlements for establishing and expanding any short-term rentals from operating anywhere in the city of Inglewood. Very importantly, the moratorium prohibits the use of STRs, short-term rentals, as party houses. The moratorium also requires host platforms to immediately remit and transient occupancy taxes for any short-term rentals operating in the city of Inglewood as of January 1st, 2022. Staff has been working with the technology vendor to identify properties that have been advertised on the internet and operated as a short-term rental. Once the properties are identified, staff will work with other city departments to collect any transient occupancy taxes owed to the city. Staff has been studying short-term rentals, regulatory rules enacted by other cities. We are compiling the best practices to assist us in development of procedures for the regulation of short-term rentals. Thank you. Thank you. I can answer any questions you have. I have one quick question, Mayor. Um, once we identify any transient uh, short term, you know, uh, it was mentioned that we collect taxes, which is good. That's the way we should do it. But I guess my question is, if, say, we send them a bill, they don't send it back, is that are we in a position now where that it can be placed on the tax rolls? I don't know. Have we gone that far or is that an we, action we, we would We have haven't to gone that far, but we would have to do it just as we do with a water bill. Yeah. We would have to have a staff report. That says that we are going to create lean the property, a, uh, a lien on properties yeah. for a bill owed the city. Exactly. So we would have to create our pathway to exactly, and that's mm -hmm. that was my question. Yes. Because I, I know it doesn't. We wouldn't be able to use the hotel one. We would have to create another exactly. one separate. Exactly. Okay, that was it. Thank you, Ms. Funk. Thank you. So now uh, we're ready to receive public comments. Operator, are there any callers on the line? Mayor, at this time there are no callers on the line. Okay. Um, if there are no council comments. Checking the library, Mayor. Oh, checking the library. Are there any, or any, anyone in the library want to make public comment for the public hearing? No comments, Mayor. All right. Mayor, I move uh, uh, extending the interim ordinance. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members, Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. So now we'll go to PH1. Madam Clerk, what's the next scheduled matter? Yes, Mayor. The next scheduled matter is a public hearing to receive, consider, and discuss adjusted census data from the National Demographic Corporation. Has the notice of the hearing been given in the uh, time, form, and manners required by law, and is there an affidavit on file? Yes, Mayor. Notice has been given, and an affidavit is on file. Have we received any communications on the matter? No communications have been received, Mayor. Mr. City Manager, is there a staff report on the matter? Yes, Ms. Aisha Thompson, City Clerk, will give the staff report. Thank you so much, Mr. Fields. Um, hello, Mayor and City Council. Uh, it is my pleasure to stand before you to present this uh, item to you today in regards to redistricting our city. It was determined earlier that we did not have to do any redistricting based off our population. However, law says that uh, we have to go further now because um, we have to look at the age and the ethnicity of each district. And so um, we weren't, meaning our city, we weren't able or capable of handling that, port, that portion of it. So we had to reach out. And so uh, I reached out to the National uh, Demographic Corporation and spoke with Mr. Doug Johnson, who will be given a presentation uh, to let us know uh, the findings as to why now I'm coming back asking that uh, we uh, reconsider the, um, the draft maps that were provided. Uh, it was determined that uh, District 1 was overly populated based off age and ethnicity, and District 3 was underpopulated with age and 
uh, pop and age and ethnicity. So that, so that was Eloy's fault, right? Yes, it was. He uh, took uh, all the uh, Latinos uh, from us. That's <laughs> what it was. We usually don't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good thing. It's okay. And and in the in the making of that, we were also um, able to you know try and accommodate uh, District One and Two, and uh, by bringing in Ed Vincent Park because that property is so large, uh, we wanted to. Uh, allow District 1 and 2 to share um, Ed Vincent Park. Uh, and so we've, uh, not me, but uh, uh, the help with Doug, and I want to introduce uh, Mr. Doug Johnson. Uh, not only is he um, the president of the National Demographic Corporation, but uh, Mr. Johnson has a great history here in our city. His great-grandfather lived here in the city of Inglewood, and not only that, but his great-grandfather, uh, the school Frank D. Parent, is named after his great grandfather. Oh, so we are honored. We're pleased to have him back in the territory of which he's come from. And so, Mr. Johnson, if you would come and please address our council with the findings of each uh, each uh, map that's been given. So, so Doug, how did you arrange that? <laughs> <laughs> it, it truly is an honor to, to come back. You know, actually, you'll appreciate my my mom tells the stories of you know he was a judge and elected mm -hmm. and. Uh, so his house was always cool because he had the first radio in the area and the first TV in the area because that's how he got all the neighbors to come over and keep in touch as an elected official. He was also on the school board back in the day. So, uh, so many, many stories from, about the judge. Welcome back. So, so my pleasure. So, so I'll, I'll keep this fairly brief, but uh, really, as I was just talking about, we're not looking at huge changes in, in how these lines are drawn, just some small adjustments. Um, just kind of to set the stage, we are looking at the, the rules. There are federal and state requirements for how these lines are drawn. So the federal ones are the ones most people know. Equal population, we have to comply with the Federal Voting Rights Act uh, and not engage in racial gerrymandering. Pretty straightforward. The state has added a new set. These are brand new for 2020 uh, called the Fair Maps Act. And so in priority order, the districts have to be contiguous. They have to avoid, wherever possible, dividing neighborhoods and communities of interest. I try to follow easily identifiable boundaries, major roads, rivers, that kind of thing. And then try to be compact, which the law defines as not bypassing one group of people to get to another. And the law also prohibits considering um, or favoring or disfavoring uh, political parties when drawing council district lines. So those two are our statutory requirements. And then often um, what are called traditional principles be considered uh, minimizing the number of voters who are expecting a vote in 2022 but get bumped into a 2024 seat. People, some, some often get bumped the other way, but they don't really mind as much getting to vote faster than being delayed. And then uh, the courts have said you can look at where the council is and trying to uh, avoid pairings. You can also uh, accommodate very, very slightly uh, within that equal population number of future population growth. And then the other one uh, that comes up in particular here is preserving the core of existing districts. The idea there is that people in these districts have worked together for in some cases, decades, mm -hmm. uh, getting to know each other and working on campaigns. So unless there's some other reason to disrupt that, you try to avoid disrupting those networks of voters that exist. So those are the rules we have in the back of our mind as we're looking at these lines. Again, your current map actually, even though it was drawn before these rules were in place for the state, pretty well complies with them. So we're not looking at huge changes. Um, as the city clerk mentioned, District 3 does need to pick up some population. And so we looked at uh, we have four maps to show you today. Um, map A simply extends uh, District 3 to the east, north of Manchester. So it goes over to Prairie and, um, and picks that up. And then this map actually moves all of Ed Vincent Junior Park into District 2, along with the homes that are on the east edge and the north side of the park. So, um, so that's option A. Option B is... Uh, essentially the other approach with Ed Vincent. So this moves three over to Prairie, the same as, as A does, but does not move Ed Vincent Park. And so it's just that simple change between, between three and one. And you notice we're not mentioning District 4. District 4 actually is population mounts, so it doesn't need any changes. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's just today, huh, Doug? Yeah, exactly. Tell, tell her what we talked about, about District I 4. Uh, it, I will say, enjoy it now, because we were talking about, with the stadium and all that happening, in 10 years, when you come back in 10 years, it's going to be a whole different story, I'm okay. sure. That's yeah, in 10 years, I'll worry about yeah, it then. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> it is one of the things to keep in mind, is that the numbers were... were right, right. 
Yeah, the numbers that we're working with are April of 2020, so they're almost two years old, and there just wasn't much of the development around the stadium at that point um, that the census counted. So those two maps NDC drew. Map C actually came in through the clerk's outreach efforts who did get a map in from the public. Um, this is uh, lots of changes in this map. Uh, really, you can see actually District 1 shifts a little west um, over to La Brea, and then District 3 makes up for that by coming over down in the south and moves. It actually picks up the, the current little western arm of District 4. And then there's some um, about three blocks, three city blocks from District 1 at the north end uh, move into District 2, and a strip of homes on the east side of the stadium. Just It's really a half a block on the east side of the stadium moves into District 4 from District 1. So we're happy to see the input. It's, it's certainly but it looks like that a larger change. Exacerbates the imbalance, though. It it makes actually the there's enough people down in that southern piece where three moves over. Let me see if the mouse is working. Um, so three picks up the what currently is District Four down at the bottom, which is very heavily populated. So that small area there mm -hmm. uh, picks Create up. Create a I think the mayor's talking about the socioeconomic imbalance, oh, sure. which exists if you do it this way. Uh, definitely, definitely, yeah. So this is well, something we welcome. Well, but Doug, we have to, we have to, we have to um, spell it out. Does this work? Does this map work to put us in compliance with law? It, it does work from the numbers perspective, but it does a lot more than needs to be done. So those those points I mentioned before of trying to keep the cores of the districts together, those kinds of things, mm -hmm. avoiding shifts. Those are not statutory requirements, but they're what the courts call traditional principles. So this meets the statutory requirements, but it doesn't follow those traditional principles. Okay. So, yeah, but we are, oh, we always want to appreciate, you know, when the residents Oh, we, lo we, lo we love it that <laughs> someone would take this kind of time. Yeah. We love it. And then um, in working um, on these different maps and looking at different options, Map D is the last map I have to show you. It has that same Manchester Boulevard over to Manchester Terrace and up Prairie, uh, addition to District 3 to balance the populations of 3 and 1. And then it leaves all the northern population of District 1 in 1, but it picks up the west end of the park. So the Ed Vincent Junior Park, essentially the tennis courts and everything west of the tennis courts technically would go into 2. There is The county does require that each piece of land be assigned to a single district. So it, um, and we have to follow parcel lines. So that just happens to be where the parcel line goes through the park. But essentially, for all intents and purposes, it would just be that districts one and two would be sharing the park. We just have to formally show some division line in there. Okay. So that does do that without moving any people. Yeah, because they're parcels. Yeah. So it, they just it, split it right down. They split it down parcel. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's a staff report. Is there any um, public comment? Operator? At this time, there are no public comments. OK. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again. The dial-in for open session is 888-251-2949 or 215-861-0694. And the access code, once again, is 809-0607, pound. Wait three seconds and press pound again. And so we're going to let speakers from uh, Library Lecture Hall speak, and we'll keep uh, the lines open until then. Please go ahead. Good evening, everybody, um, especially Inglewood residents. Uh, I want to first call to the attention of the City Council that in order to remain in compliance with the Fair Maps Act, um, you needed to have done two public hearings allowing the public to participate as well as give comments regarding uh, the redistricting of this map. Um, however, this is only our first public hearing in which the community has been allowed the opportunity to watch as well as comment on. Um, the first one that you guys have scheduled was for March 1st. Uh, however, on March 1st, the city council meeting, the live broadcast ended six seconds after you guys started. So the public was unable to watch. Um, and then many people were actually on the phone call with their hands raised, attempting to comment, and they were not allowed to do so. 
Um, on top of that, when the city council meeting was over, the city failed to post um, a video of the city council meeting, so the community still does not uh, know exactly what was said during that hearing. Um, I'm sure that the legislative body is aware that you guys received a cure and correct letter. And had you guys actually acted on that cure and correct letter in a timely manner, um, we would still be on schedule according to the schedule that you guys are trying to um, get everything accomplished by. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention that no, we did not have our first hearing. And even to this day, as I sit here addressing you guys, there is no video posted online of that March 1st city council meeting. Um, secondly, I wanted to comment on the four maps that were submitted for us to look over. Um, and I want to recommend map C because according to um, the, um, the articulation of the map, map C is the only one that divides all four districts into 25% representation. So I am someone who strongly believes that um, in order for this community to continue to thrive or even be in a position to thrive, that we need fair and equal representation across all districts. That is my comment. Thank you. M Ms. Dixon, that the council meeting you talked about was not a public hearing. It was a council meeting. And, on, March, uh, on March 1st? Yes. Oh, it was a public hearing. Excuse, excuse me for one moment. I still got 24 Ex seconds. Excuse me. So I can still talk. Well, go right ahead. I just said it was March 1st. And it was a public hearing. Okay. And so there were public hearings held on these days, October 26, 2021. January 29th, 2022. March 1st, 2022. Um, the, Janu Excuse the January one was a workshop. That actually was not a public hearing. That, that's correct, but we did have to have a workshop. Yeah. And so. Today would have been the second public hearing. No, you're, you're Miss, say, Madam Clerk, would you explain it to her? Okay, thank you. So October 26 was the original when we called for the hearing and we had the first public hearing. And then January 29th was the workshop held, which by law we had to have at least one workshop uh, where the community participated and we had that. We um, also had one on March the 1st. We had one on March the 8th and then, uh, not March the 8th, excuse me, and then today, March the 15th. So we've had exactly. More. So um, we've had more than two. Thompson. No, and, no. The the first one was scheduled to be March first, as no. Miss Thompson. Just no, no, said. no, ma'am. October twenty sixth of twenty twenty one. We so had the first one. What what was it that was scheduled for March first that the community did not get to participate in? We had. We had the um, October 26th was the first one. January 29th was the workshop. The second public hearing was March the 1st. This is our third public hearing. And then March 22nd will be the fourth public hearing. And then April 5th would be the one where council would actually adopt. Considering the fact, as I stated earlier, that the community did not have the opportunity to participate in the March 1st public hearing, um, it seems as if we have, have been excluded from this process and that you guys are not complying with the Fair Maps Act. Well, we actually have. We've had more than two public hearings. So thank you very much, Ms. Dixon. Yeah, you're welcome. And we'll receive public comment as well, Mayor, via email, which was passed out to Mayor and Council. All right. Yes, sir. Well, the, the issue is we had two public yes, hearings. We Did we fulfill the requirements? Oh, yes, ma'am. We, we more than fulfilled them. Yeah. Uh, are there any other... It looks like there's no other public comment. Operator, are there any other callers? No, Mayor, there are no more callers. Okay, with that, the public comment portion is now closed. Um, I move one, two, three, and then we'll talk about four. Moving one, two, and three. Matt, Madam City Clerk. Council members, Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Well, you're, you're moving one, two, and three, three. Mm -hmm. which is just and uh, considering. And we're going to have a discussion on four. On the maps. On the maps. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. So, Madam City Clerk, if I read the um, public hearing instructions, we are to give direction as to our preferred draft map. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, well, I, I move uh, map D, which 
splits the um, he is in David that splits the uh, parcel lines through Edward Vincent Park. Yeah, I, I support that. I'd like to hear from uh, our council members, District 1 and 2, uh, if they understand, like, you know, the actual splitting and how the intention is to uh, equally uh, equal use for District 1 and 2 in regards to the park. And the only reason why we say split is because we have to show the county parcel. So it's not really split. Okay. We, and, we just and, have to say that and, and for, one of the by things law be, for the public. Before before we get into that, the reality is it's a park that belongs to the entire city. It does. It's, this is, this is, it's <laughs> semantics right. when you say it's in a park? district. It's not... No, no, anybody's it's just for park the county purposes. Exactly, and so this the, is all and, and all right. So, so <laughs> just no, so the public will understand. Oh, this is half of mine. No, it's <laughs> not like that. you made it feel less special, Jim. Okay. <laughs> it's still I, the use I, of I, council I, I one and it, two. I had no, to do it before and they, three and four. You know, I had to do it before they spoke. Let's clarify guys. that. You can use right. it. Yes. Yes. All right. No, George. If you have any comments, go for it first since it was in your whole district. Okay. Well, I, I and looking at all of the maps, um, that seems the most fair it's because District One lost everything. No, you didn't. Uh, you didn't. So I'm, you I'm got glad equalized, to see George. No, you didn't, I'm glad to see you guys uh, at least give us part of the park. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't count. But no, I think it was it, it's fair than than some of the other maps or the other maps. So I I think this is this is good with me. Yes, sir. Right. Councilman Padilla. Thank you, Mayor. You know, I'd like to take all of this apart. <laughs> Trust me. But I get it, right, because of the parcel issue. And so I want to make sure the public understands Thank you. Because it is important, right, when you're talking about these uh, these changes that are can only occur every 10 years when we do the census. This is your big bite at the apple. This is our chance as a city, as a community, to, to get it right. And so... This is based solely on our population with a few variables that get in the mix. And Vincent Park is split in two parcels. So in order to comply, because of that, part of it's gonna stay in District 1 and part of it is gonna go into District 2. That being said, at the end of the day, folks, like the mayor said and everybody else has been saying, it's still and will always be Edward Vincent Jr. Park, always for the city of Inglewood. This is just a formality that we need to adhere to, to abide by the law. And uh, I think we're all good with it. Map number D is in David. And so I'm, I'm, I'm good. And, and I'm going to, I think I'm, I'm going to expand a couple of blocks and get us some, some, uh, you, you, you'll get a few residents, Council, but you couldn't take it all the way because then you will become overpopulated. No, 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 no. I'm, I know that, but I'm just okay. saying I'm going to get you will, you a will couple get of a residents. Few. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, so, sir. I mean, you know, it, it's a win-win for all of us. Yeah, all I'm of us. To. I mean, this is a win-win. And again, it's a formality that we as a city had to adhere to. So can I move in Alex's district? <laughs> Come on, you Mayor. Might, we love you might already you. be there the way these lines are going. You can yeah. move anywhere you want to, Mayor. You're the mayor. Right. So. Right. And now you're just right. showing right. off, man. <laughs> okay, Madam City Clerk, would you call the roll? Um, because I, I moved Eloy seconded. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then we had discussion. And okay, no other discussion. D. Oh, yes, I okay. Second. So this, this is for map D, and this is the map that we will go and have Doug to uh, get drawn up, you know, freshened up for us and... We'll present that at next week's council meeting, okay? Okay. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. Consent calendar items two through five. So moved. moved. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. DR1. Thank Staff. you, Mr. Johnson. Staff report recommending approval. Doug, of thank you. Oh, yes. Thank, thank you, Doug. You. We'll be in contact. Yes, thank you. Staff report recommending approval of amendment number one to agreement number 21-010 with Gannett Fleming, Inc. to incorporate California labor law requirements. Uh, move approval. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. 
Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. DR2. Staff report recommending approval of, am of amendment number one to agreement number 22-117 with AECOM te Technical Services, Inc. to incorporate California labor law requirements. Move approval. Second. Uh -huh. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. DR3. Staff report recommending approval of amendment number one to agreement number 22-129 with answer advisory, LLC, to incorporate California labor law requirements. So move. Second. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. DR4. Staff report recommending adoption of a resolution declaring the implementation of a level one water supply shortage a measure for all City of Inglewood Water Service Area residents and businesses. Move adoption. Second. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Buds. Aye. A1. Thank you, Mayor. in that matter? So moved. Second. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. And the second item was the workers' compensation claim of Ricardo Medina. And again, there's a request for settlement authority in that matter. So moved. Second. second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Falk. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. CM1. Thank you, Mayor. There are no reports from the city manager's office. Thank you, sir. CC1. Yes, Mayor, thank you so much. First, I want to just acknowledge the hard work so far with the um, with my staff. We've been working tirelessly, and I just wanted to make mention that you guys are appreciated, and I love you guys, and thank you so much for putting up with me. Um, secondly, the GIS department has been just so great, Lewis. I mean, I am so grateful for Elsa and Abby. I mean, thank you guys so, 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 so much. Just thank you so much because their knowledge is so powerful and great in this process as well. And then also I wanted to remind our, our residents that next week we have uh, another public hearing. So we'll be working tirelessly yet again uh, to get this staff report prepared and ready. So uh, for our residents, March 22nd is our uh, when we bring it back to the city council for it to be, um, for the map D to be um, introduced as an ordinance to our mayor and council. And then lastly, we want to wish everyone a happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, mayor. <clears throat> Thank you so much. There are no appointments to boards, commission, and committees. Public comment. Uh, persons wishing to address the city council matter connected with city business not elsewhere considered may do so at this time for one minute. Operator, are there any callers on the line? At this time, Mayor, there are no callers. With that, we'll go to the library lecture hall. Are there any comments uh, from any members of the public? Yes, Mayor, we have several. All right. Greetings, Billion Gosselin, Africa Town Coalition. Um, you know, we was here about a year and a half ago when a lot of residents were saying they needed help with rental assistance. We know. I think September of that year, you began a program, but here we are a year and a half later. A number of people saying they're having a lot of challenges actually getting that assistance, and we know people need it right now. In addition to Inglewood, the county has a program that will be closing at the end of this month that would help if people were more familiar with it. And also, there's a state program, so why people are struggling right now doesn't really add up. Um, Taste of Inglewood, that was wonderful, you know. Fantabulous, but we go right back to a ghost town. So, you know, Inglewood's been, um, you know, the, the talk of the nation right now. And, and Market Street is like right up the street from the council office. So, you know, let's get that going again. We got a lot of um, young black entrepreneurs that would love the opportunity with the right resources and um, support behind them. So, you know, let's get Inglewood back to what it was. Thank black you. power. Thank you, sir. Black Power, are you learning? He said Black Power, Power. Brown Good Power, are you learning? Good Brown afternoon. Power, Brown. Um, Please. Yeah, so on the DR4, you mentioned a water a resolution because of this uh, water supply shortage measure. I'm not familiar with what that is, and I'd like to know whether it has been presented to the uh, community of Inglewood 
so that everyone is aware that that is about to happen. Also, I'd like to make a comment on the different map district maps. I wanted to know if the, the map D actually is divided equitably as you spoke of, or you discussed uh, in each each um, district has a 25% of the population as you thought was equitable. It's a total population, ma'am. My it, it, question it, is. It, 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 does, it does meet state requirements, yes. Uh, what D does not meet state requirements. Is that what you're No, saying? I'm saying yes, it does. It does, but the other C was not considered. It also met the state all of requirements. Them, all of them were considered. And then, then so what happens is, is the council is charged with picking one, and the one that the council picked was D. I see, but we did have a um, public comment which recommended C as well. We saw and, that. Okay. So my question is, Are they, is the map D that you chose, does it represent 25% of the population for each of the districts? It, it's, it's not done like there's several uh, factors of consideration, and raw population is just one of them. But that is the main one, uh, because we know that District 1 had an unequitable it, it, amount it of had, it population. Had, it had more people, yes. Yes, it did. So and, and it balanced that, to, yes. yeah, to, Did you, does a map D do that? Okay, <laughs> I was aware of that. Um, so anyway, yes, ma'am, it, it does work. Okay, because I, I didn't hear that, I didn't see what I you're saying. Them. But that was the presentation that uh, Doug made. So that if you go back and go to channel 35 or go to YouTube, you'll be able to hear it again. Okay? So you're saying that it is now equitable. Map yes, D is the one that was most equitable. That, that's the word, equitable, D. Okay. And so we're going to have to move on to the next uh, speaker now. Good afternoon, all of you. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, my name is Michael Leitaev. I'm a <coughs> co-founder of uh, Rainbow Children's Academy here in Inglewood. I came to this town in uh, 2002. It used to be Cadillac dealership. It right. was way down, <laughs> and nobody even rented. But I decided to take over and build some uh, <coughs> beautiful school uh, for um, community, especially for uh, low-income family, single mom, single parents, single fathers. So <clears throat> took me four years to build this place. I spent all, everything uh, what I got, my family, tremendous amount of money. After four years, we opened up the door in 2006. Took me one year to build this place. I mean, to bring the, you know, the You're down community. to 10 seconds, sir. Huh? You're down to 10 seconds. All right, so <clears throat> we need some support right now, not because of the COVID. Of course, the main thing is COVID, and the economy is bad now. We need some support to keep the doors open. If you guys can help us support this incredible, beautiful place, it's like a Disneyland. Uh, if, we <clears throat> if, if anything open to support this, keep school is open because we're getting the kids from uh, uh, foster okay. kids, oh, kids oh, from oh, special okay. needs. Sir, yes. we're at time. We're at time. You're welcome to come back next week. OK. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, just letting the uh, speakers know, the time is one minute. Go right ahead, ma'am. Um, so I want to follow up with the question that one of the community members asked regarding when the money for um, the rental, um, the housing key, the rental assistance program will be dispersed. Um, that is my first question. And the next thing that I want to know is uh, what exactly is the city council doing to help keep um, not only schools like Rainbow Academy 
open, but also Warren Lane. Um, the community has basically been begging and pleading for support from our leaders in this community for quite some time now, and it seems that they continuously are ignored. So I am presenting the question to you all, what are you guys doing or what are you willing to do to actually be able to assist your constituents, excuse me, in keeping these schools open? Thank you. As far as rental assistance, there are uh, procedures and when people apply, they have to meet the requirements and they have to fill out paper. No, you don't have to come back up. We're not, we're not it's not a debate, you're done. You're done. You're done right now. Who You're have done. already come. Cut the mic. And so basically what they have to do is they have to apply and they have to complete paperwork. And we've issued vouchers to everyone that has applied and, uh, and met the requirements. And then the second question, what was it? Oh, about Warren Lane. No, I, I'm not asking you to come back, ma'am. I'm not asking you to come back. Anyway, so Warren Lane holds about 738 students. They're down to 111 students. The district uh, owes $25 million of a $50 million loan that they got from the state to a private entity now. They've gone from about 13,000 students district-wide uh, district in about between 2011 and 2013, down to about 6,700 students right now. The, the schools are financed by ADA financing, average daily attendance monies. And so basically what you have is a 19 school district that now has to be financed on less than half the income they were making years ago. So with that said, the city council does not now, nor have we ever, had operational, financial, or managerial control or input into the school district. It's a separate branch of government. It's like asking us, what were we gonna do, what would we do if the state decided to close the DMV on La Brea? Or if the post office decided to close their post office on Imperial? When your trees aren't trimmed, your streets aren't paved, you don't go to the school district and say, what are you going to do about it? So, well, I understand the, the frustration. The reality is, one, the council has no authority when it comes to school closures. And I will tell you this, looking at the math for the school district, there will be other school closures. Uh, but there is a committee that the school district has put together. They have open public meetings so that the public can have input as well. But... The reality is, is that you have a school that has 111 students and it's built to house 738 and they cannot finance it. I don't want to see it close. It's the, it's the only um, school in, uh, in Morningside Park. Well, I, I think it's terrible for it to close. But the reality is, is that there have to be responsible financial decisions made. When I took office here, we had over 1,000 employees, I think. We're down to 755. We took away uh, a lifetime medical promise to all of our employees because it couldn't be funded. And so the reality is, is that when people are left holding the bag, as I was left holding the bag when I came in here, as we all were, you have to make tough decisions. And right now, for the first time in the four to five interim superintendents that they had, there's an interim superintendent that is actually making tough decisions not staying a couple years, getting paid, and then moving on to something else, having been paid to make tough decisions. So, And Mayor, if I could just quickly add you on You definitely can. The um, uh, student population that the Mayor is talking about, going from 700 plus students to 111, uh, that's significant because it isn't just about a, a unified body deciding they want to keep it open. Everybody would love to keep the the schools open. We love our schools. However, in, in the way the schools run in the state of California, there is a direct correlation between enrollment and funds given to the school. And it's based on absences. It's based on attendance. That's how school districts get their funding. 
So when you go from 750 to 111, that's significant. And so, but the, the, to manage that school, the cost stays the same. So it, 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 difficult decisions have to be made. Uh, in the city, when we were going through the tough time the mayor was talking about, we did our best to keep all our programming as, as, as high as we could, but we did cut back on, say, per se, our library hours, our, our park programs, and now that we've seen an upswing and we've grown as a city and, and our, our budget is more healthy, we've seen ourselves come back to where we were pre that situation. They, the school district is working its way to get themselves back, and they won't be able to do it if they keep funding areas who cannot fund themselves. So hey, I just wanted to add that, mm -hmm. Mayor, to what you said. Thank well, you. Well, And, you know, the, the part of what we did, we, we, we outsourced our parking control. We outsourced our tree trimming because we couldn't afford to do the things that we were doing or we would have been in receivership. Tough decisions have to be made. So I applaud Dr. Torres for making tough decisions. I think it's terrible that Warren Lane will be closed. However, it's not for us to make the decisions for her because we, in the end, we won't be responsible if the district goes insolvent. Mm -hmm. And so that's the best way we can answer that. Yeah, of course you can, former, former school board member. everything that was said. And then I also want to remind residents that we went through a potential closing of Warren Lane previously. It happened about two years ago, maybe just a slightly less. And I was on the school board at the time and it was a very difficult decision. And um, we held uh, public town halls with that direct community and we asked for input and they made it clear at that time that we would work in partnership with the community to do what we could to keep it open. And um, although at that time a tough financial decision was made to keep the school open, we kept it open but then the enrollment did not really increase. It increased very slightly but it did not increase enough to warrant keeping the school open, unfortunately. So we're here again approximately two years later, so I can tell you that this was not a rash decision by our school district. This was a very financially sound decision that was thought out, and every everything was done to try and keep Warren Lane open at this point. So I just wanted to make that point, Mayor. Okay, thank you. But here, here are the big numbers. From 738 students down to a little over 100. From 13,000 students down to 6,700. And every one of those children that attend school gets money to the district on a daily basis for daily attendance right. from the state. So basically you have a, a 19 school district that's operating on less than half the funds they were receiving. Right. And Nobody wants to close a school, but there has to be money so the district doesn't go insolvent. There has to be. And there has to be a, um, an economic model so that the schools can pay the teachers competitively so that you will have quality education that will hopefully draw people back to the district. And another thing about this particular school, they have demographers that study population patterns and they, they look at the ages of households, and they make projections based on um, how many children they think will be born in and raised in that district. And so they looked at all these things, and none of these pointed toward that particular school being economically viable. It's a very emotional thing, and, and people, they contact all of us all the time. Yes. And, and, and to this day, there are people that don't know that the district and the city are two different governmental entities. But we support Dr. Torres in the tough decisions she has to make. I don't want to see that school close, but it is not for us to make those decisions for her and her staff. All right, with that, um, we'll go to council comments. Uh, oh, wait a minute. It, operator, is more. there one more? Oh, okay, hold on one second. Is there one more? Caller on the line, operator. 
at this time, I don't see anyone on the line. Okay, thank you. Uh, one more, one more speaker. Hello there, but I request two minutes because this is an on agenda about housing protection. Yes, it is so good to see you again, sir. Yes, I appreciate the phone call, Mr. Butts. No, I haven't had a chance to call you. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, but because, because when you and I talk, I want it to be meaningful and time intensive. All right? Well, why don't we have a, okay, so what? let me tell you this. Sitting on my desk is your phone number, right there in the middle of my desk. And every time I see it, I get a chill, and I say, I got to call this guy. So let me promise you this. Let me promise you this. Today... At some point this afternoon, you and I will talk on the phone. Is it right? But I got a, I got a problem with the, the other, uh, the housing, the short term housing. I've had two units that I've had off the market for two years, getting it ready. And now, just when I get them ready, you're going to say that I, I can't do Airbnb? You're going to put a moratorium on this because of some shooting at a party house? I mean, the real reason you guys are doing this moratorium is so you can collect the rent. I mean, collect the taxes, isn't it? No, uh, sir, no, that's, that's, not, that's not what's going on. Basically, what's happened is we've had uh, an underground situation where people are airbnb -ing. And, yes, we did have a terrible incident where uh, a, a property was used as a party house. But that's not the totality of the situation. This needs to be regulated. And so it's not that we don't want you to be able to Airbnb, but we are going to have regulations because, remember, this has an impact on neighborhood integrity. What do I mean when I say that? You can't have... Two of them in my neighborhood, and they, they, they're great. I mean, they, they just rent rooms out, and it's great. And, okay. they, and, 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 and you know what? And probably 90%... Of people at Airbnb just put just put a moratorium on party houses. Well, okay, we're not gonna we're not. It's not that easy. We're not gonna do it. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come up with a program that is comprehensive, that makes sense. And all we're asking you to do is hold on. It won't be ten months. Hi. It'll pro probably be more like six, and uh, and you'll be able. You'll be just fine. No, I won't be fine. I still. I still. Thirty-five thousand dollars rent from the other two, two other units, because you guys gave the rent away free. Because we gave the rent away free. Yeah. What, what do you? Oh, because oh, of rent control. You know. No, no, the rent control is another problem. <laughs> I, I, but I do have. I am letting the board know. I am going to file a constitutional question on the rent control, and I'm going to be filing the papers with the, with the attorney general, which I have to do, and so and, it gives you sixty and, days. And, and, and you know what? And that is definitely your right, sir. That's definitely your right. So anyway, look forward to that call. I look forward to you yelling at me on the phone now. Take care. Okay. With that, unless there are any other speakers? I think we have one more, Mayor. You know, ma'am, you, you spoke once already, didn't you? Can I, can I comment you, on another area? Ma'am, so, ma'am. Am you, I allowed to do that? I'd like to make a comment on your you, discussion on the school district. But, ma'am, it, it's not like that. You only get one chance to speak. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't, I okay, didn't that's okay. okay. No problem. So we really do need more than one minute. I think the board Okay, ma'am, ma'am, thank you. Okay, with that, we'll close public comment. Council comments, Councilman Dotson. Uh, last Wednesday, we had a groundbreaking for the new pump track at Ed Vincent Park. He's being built in conjunction with Red Bull and Grove Cycling Foundation. The track will be used by mountain bikes, and it will be the only track of its kind in Southern California. Red Bull will be holding professional mountain bike racing tournaments there. And... Uh, that is really something, guys, for us to have the only one in Southern California. So um, when, when it's built, come out and try it. <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to say is um, I was able, along with the, the mayor and council members, to go to the opening of the Little League Baseball in Rogers Park Saturday. 
that was the most amazing thing I had seen in a long time. There were over 200 uh, participants in that thing. And everybody uh, had a wonderful time. It was a little long, but other than that, it was, you know, it was well attended. Uh, and I'm sure that that little league would do very well with the amount of people that it has. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I wish everybody a great St. Patrick's Day and uh, have a great afternoon. Thank you, Councilman Dawson. Councilman Padilla. Thank you. Uh, you know, so let's talk about the redistricting. I don't want to beat that up, but, but you know, there's, there's guidelines that we'd have to adhere to. The city clerk takes charge of this to make sure that we're following the state laws as it pertains to the redistricting, and she's doing all of that. So kudos to you and your staff. For those that want more information, please reach out to the city clerk's office, and I know she'll be able to answer and happy to answer any of your questions uh, and concerns. There's a lot of things that we're doing here in the city of Inglewood, and, and folks will say, well, I didn't hear about this, I didn't hear about that. You know, we have a social media page, so please, you know, click on and follow the city of Inglewood on, on our social media, on Instagram. You know, we put a lot of really good dynamic information about what's happening uh, in Inglewood. And I know we all have newsletters. I know I do one every single Thursday. Yes, he I does. do a newsletter. Yes, I do. He does. And in that newsletter, I put information about what's happening in Inglewood. <laughs> Hence, it's called What's Happening. Uh, and that's because we all want to, you know, strive to keep our community informed on, w on what's going on, pertinent, timely information so that we don't, you know, have to hear later that you, know, you guys are doing super secret stuff and you're not sharing it with us. And that's the farthest thing from the truth. Uh, so if you're interested in getting my newsletter, please send me an email to apadilla at cityofingwood.org or you can call my office at 310-412-8601, and we'll put you on the newsletter uh, distribution that goes out again every Thursday. I want to thank uh, this past Sunday, I did the pet vaccination clinic. Again, an overwhelming response. So I want to just thank our community that came out to support uh, the vaccination clinic, and specifically to our partners from L.A. County Department of Animal care and control. Uh, there's some pictures up there with the families and their loved ones, meaning the pets, that came out uh, for this event. I'm going to be having a shredding event. Again, folks are going through all their paperwork to get ready to file their taxes. So if you have papers you need to shred, bring it to our District 2 Community Center on Saturday, April 23rd. So you have like six weeks to get all your papers together and and bring them by from 9 to 12. Uh, I, too, want to thank uh, Isaac Yoshinaga. Is that right? Correct. Yoshinaga. Uh, Isaac is the president of Inglewood uh, Little League. He did an outstanding job. I know Councilmember Morales will cover that, but I just wanted to give Isaac a shout-out. Because Isaac, you know, grew up here, and I know Ilo will touch on that, but he's also one of our uh, workers at the library and very, very helpful to our community and our children. So with that, thank you, and have a great week. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilwoman Dion Falk from District 4. There we go. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I want to, before I get into some of my announcements, I do want to take time to thank our Madam City Clerk and her team. Um, I can see that the redistricting item was huge a lot of work for you guys you did an amazing job thank you for all the communication making sure we all understand it we really appreciate all the work you guys did on that um first i'd like to announce that i am having my town hall it's taking place on march 30th of this month and we were supposed to have it uh, earlier this month but we had to reschedule so Please mark your calendars for March 30th at 6 p.m. And we will have lots and lots of great information for our um, residents there. So I look forward to seeing you on March 30th at 6 p.m. And then 
Also, just wanted to announce that there is a state emergency rental assistance that ends March 31st. I know that we have received some questions regarding rental assistance, and um, we do have that for you, that information. So um, the flyer is up. Please write down that number. It's 833-430-2122. And um, that should hopefully be a great number to get you going on uh, finding um, rental assistance. There's also a website, housingiskey.com. So um, please check that out for additional information on rental assistance. And then lastly, for Women's History Month, I want to acknowledge our Inglewood Area Airport Chamber of Commerce President, Halima Ginyard. So she is the first African-American female president CEO of this Inglewood Airport Area Chamber of Commerce. And she took office on February 1st, 2020. She is uh, also the only African-American female president that sits on the South Bay Association of Chambers of Commerce Board of Directors. So congratulations to you, Halima Ginyard. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Morales, District 3. Hey, congratulations to all the women who do so much here in the city of Inglewood uh, to get us through things and at home, of course. Oh, um, yeah. The um, uh, Going back to the division of the map, you know, uh, you know, it, it's entertaining to see how what people point at, right, in, in the public, and how they see that. You know, it's just in terms of numbers, and if we don't do what they recommend, it, we're not listening. The truth of the matter is, is that you know, probably nobody knows our districts and our city more than we do. I mean, we 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 study the numbers for for various reasons. We uh, understand the population. We understand the economics of our population. And, you know, we're, we're positioned uh, in the, probably the best place to make that decision. It's never easy, um, but it's, it's something that we take seriously and we consider every aspect. So to, to think that all you do is divide by four would be ridiculous. So I just want to point that out. I think we did a great decision today. I'm glad that District 1 and 2 are sitting both adjacent to probably one of the best parks in the region. It's the largest uh, park in the it's region. It's the largest park in the region. And and it's it's not a bad time to point out the fact that any city our size uh, these days would never have a park uh, mm -hmm. with those kind of resources. So we're very fortunate to have that. Um, in regards to uh, also did want to point out and thank the Inglewood Little League, who, who has done a great job. We've worked uh, closely with them to bring it back. Uh, some of the, the important parts of the story are that we lost our Little League for about 10 years. Um, I contacted Coach Yosh, who's done a great job, grew up in the neighborhood, really the only baseball guy in the neighborhood that was serious, to help me bring it back. We did so with a friend of ours named Lori Sparksdale, who were both coaches. Uh, and pre-COVID, we had probably about 130 kids sign up for the beginning of the league all over again. COVID hit, that all stopped. But what happened was they created some free baseball clinics to keep everybody motivated. And by the time that the COVID ended, we ended up having 200 kids for the Little League. Uh, a Amazing. big shout out for our sponsors who, who made actually Saturday a great day. Uh, I want to thank uh, the mayor and my colleagues, everybody up here who, who were so supportive and everybody was happy to see them there. Uh, but you couldn't find parking and, you know, it was packed. And that is called great traffic for a park. When you have parents dropping off kids, picking mm -hmm. up kids all week long for practices, that's what you call great traffic. So I'm proud of that. And uh, thanks, Coach Yosh. Thanks, Coach Barksdale, and everybody out there who helped. Thank you. Mm. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank the city clerk, uh, Ms. Thompson, Angela for the work that you guys did on this, uh, these maps. Uh, a lot of people were bugging you, and you guys maintained the integrity of the process, and you presented you know, the best alternatives. I want to thank Doug. He did a great job. Mm -hmm. 
I want to compliment uh, Councilman Morales on the opening of the Little League. Thank you. The field was packed. Like he said, the parking lot was packed. But here's something that I noted over there at Rogers Park. When I walked up, I walked past the basketball courts. There were, there were black and white youth, and they were playing basketball alongside the field. And they were, hi, Mayor. How you doing? Hey, Mayor. And I said, oh, this is unusual. Uh, there were great kids populating 100% of that park. It was a beautiful thing. And then you went out in the field. You had all these parents and all these children. Some of them got bored and started playing Frisbee. But it was, <laughs> it was like um, just a total change in what I've known of Rogers Park. I've been here since 72. And I've been here through the good and the bad and bad and good. But the the whole ambiance of the city is changing, not just from the sports and entertainment, not just because we're going to have high-end retail, not because we're renovating Market Street, but all the things for kids, you know, the L.A. Philharmonic Youth Orchestra, Girl Scouts Greater Los Angeles moving here, mm -hmm. um, all the investment by big sponsors into our parks. It's like we have to look for things to pay for to do at our parks now because everybody wants to be part of Inglewood. And so I just wanted to tell you, Eloy, that event was emblematic of, of the new Inglewood, but with the same people. Exactly. Thank you very much. So with that, we're adjourned. Thank you.